Jason Schaefer, Vice President of Product Engineering. I'm going to cover just a couple topics. I'll answer any questions you guys have. There's not a whole lot of time on the agenda today. I thought I'd start with a, start with a very simple idea, which is a, a forward slide. I think it works. There we go. It's really slow. So before I get into the technology around ZFS storage, which is what I'm responsible for, first I want to set the context. My, my area of responsibility at Oracle isn't for the ZFS file system. ZFS file system is a technology that's used and nested across Oracle. It's used in our engineered systems. It's the foundation for VSM. It's used across Oracle in a lot of areas. My area of focus, though, is ZFS, the, file, the, the, the storage appliance designed for NAS and data protection. And so keying off the cloud technology thing that went really well right before me, I'm going to talk about some cloud technology bits in ZFS that I think are innovative and should be discussed. This slide shows you I want to give a sense on the product. So when I talk about ZFS storage, the appliance, really I'm talking about a product line that does product for, for, for NAS and data protection and offers a full suite of storage software. Right? It's not just a NAS box. If you look at the protocol distribution for ZFS storage, the appliance, what you'll find is we're almost all NFS, but that's not all we do. 12.3% of our systems, we have about 26,000 systems that are in the marketplace now. 12.3% are single protocol, which means the opposite is true. 87% of our systems deployed are multi-protocol systems. And here I show you on the right-hand side some of the use cases and protocols that we support. On average, you see whatever, almost 50% of our systems deployed have both NFS and iSCSI working simultaneously. It really is a multi-protocol system. And that's how we design and engineer it for the marketplace. We've been designing and building this technology for over a decade. Our first introduction of ZFS, the file system, was in 2004. We've been advancing the technology and platform ever since. All right. When I talk about scale today, I'm really going to talk about two things. The first is cloud scale technology. And I'll give you some sense of what I mean by cloud scale technology. Oracle uses ZFS storage internally. We have a little over an exabyte of ZFS storage. It's the foundational la layer, layer for Oracle Cloud and Oracle IT. It's just over one exabyte in size. And it supports a very large scale environment, both in the NAS and on the block storage side of our house. All right. When we talk about core cloud scale design elements, there's a few things that are critical. And I mentioned a couple of them up here that I'm going to talk about today, right? Pod level performance. We do a lot of work to balance our architecture, our pod architecture, to ensure not only the right level of scalability and performance, but also the right level of risk profile. Our smallest system, our little ZS5 tool, will do about 11.8 gigabytes per second of throughput per controller. That's what a single controller can do. We balance that performance against a risk profile of not putting more than, say, 10,000, 12,000 users per pod, per rack architecture. That architectural design balance is a very critical balance when you include not only the pod performance, but also the availability and overhead associated with, with that architecture. Because you, you're guaranteeing a certain level of SLO or SLA performance characteristics by pod. And I'll talk about that. It's also about orchestrating it such that administrative operations per second, per minute, are sizable. Right? Today we're shooting for about 800 operations per minute. When I say operations per minute, I mean LUN deletes, LUN, LUN creates, et cetera. We also account for very rapid snap clone capability. Today, our pod generates about 30, under 35 seconds for every 100 clones we create. And in our cloud world, this is a very important statistic because as customers wait for awning and offing a, cloud, a, a clone or a snap, that time to delay for, is for their, for their applications incredibly important. All right. So when I talk about engineering for cloud, ZFS for cloud, I'm really talking about a lot of areas. There's front-end scalability, there's back-end scalability, and there's administrative scalability. All are of equal importance for the architecture. For simplicity, I'm going to talk about really two things. I'm going to talk about hybrid cloud pool, which is a logical back-end scalability component of our system. I'm going to talk about management scalability, what we do to automate the integration with ZFS and database. And then I'll take any questions you have. Let's first talk about the hybrid cloud pool. Hybrid cloud pools automated use of public clouds. And our design point challenge is very simple. We wanted to enable virtually unlimited cloud, cloud pool scalability via external cloud attach without impending primary storage performance. That was our design, design challenge. And the engineers that worked on this project did a good job of meeting that design challenge in what I think is a very innovative way. Let me take you back to where we were. If you look at our architecture circa 2012, 2010, 
We had what we call a hybrid storage pool. Hybrid storage pool is designed to serve as many IOs out of DRAM as possible. In our own internal evaluation, we have about 9,000 systems at phone home. I assess those systems almost on a weekly basis. Those architectural, those systems generate about 90% of their IO out of, IO out of DRAM in our multi-level CAS architecture. We're serving 90% of our IOs out of DRAM. 86% of our reads that miss DRAM hit our L2 cache, our read-based um, flash device. And we also have a write-based flash device for small block random OTP environments. It's a very cache-friendly architecture. Right. What we've done with the Z Cloud, or what I call hybrid cloud pool technologies, we've nested in a brand new way to orchestrate and scale ZFS storage. On the left hand side, you see our traditional hybrid storage pool architecture. Again, with two layers of cache read oriented cache, write oriented cache, and obviously L1 cache is our memory. What's new about this architecture is instead of just having the VDEVs make up the pool of storage that sits in the storage subsystem in the, store, in the customer environment, now we've added the ability to take and create using containers, slices of a container an unlimited size pool of storage that's resident in a public cloud. All the caching mechanisms are still in play. Your primary L1 cache is still in play for reads. Your secondary L2 cache is still in play for, for reads. Your write cache is still in play. All the data services are still in play as well. The only architectural difference is that we've taken and enabled unlimited scalability using a public cloud environment attached right to the ZFS machine, consuming no storage resident on the system itself. Make sense? It's a very compelling and very interesting architecture. What it does is it preserves all the things that you care about on premise. So it preserves your, your object API interface, your NAS, your file interface, your web dev interface. It preserves all the interfaces that you've established. It preserves all the data services that you've established, claps, snap, um, snaps, clones, replication, shadow migration, et cetera. All those data services and analytics are still available and in control on premise. The only difference then, again, is you can use the public cloud for expansion of storage. Architecturally, the other interesting and compelling thing about this is you can nest in, embed a public cloud pool right next to your on-prem pool and replicate, migrate, shadow migrate data to and from both pools. So you talked earlier about the challenge of having scalable in the cloud, but the, the egress cost of that cloud. You don't have that egress consumption cost in this type of model because all the maintenance, all the control, all the, the administration still ma is maintained on-premise. So when you pull a bit back from the cloud, you're not pulling that egress at 100% of the capacity, you're pulling it at a small fraction of your original capacity. Makes sense? A very, very compelling scalable architecture for modern cloud architectures. And for users that use it, the, the interface is very simple. In fact, your users will not even know the difference between a cloud pool and a non-cloud pool other than you'll see difference in analytics. It's a very, very simple concept. And it enables cloud level scalability without having to deploy everything in the cloud and bring back and egress that data when you need to for data mining or what have you. There are three use cases for it. The first one is just as a gateway. And for this, consider it, consider it essentially a protocol translation device. You ingest NFS, SMB, LUNs, what have you. It, translate, it translates into objects and stores, it stores in an object storage. It's unlimited in terms of scale, scale and potential, but you still have all the nested controls on premise that you need. In fact, one of the key design points, we, decisions we made about five years ago, was because we're moving into the cloud, we didn't want to ensure that you had to have, say, self-encrypting drives as your mechanism to ensure protection against thefts or what have you. We chose early on instead to nest in a software-based encryption technology so that when you did move data to and from the cloud, you'd ensure protection of that, either at a high performance level, say uh, 128, or a high secure level, 256. You get a very, very tight granular control of your security mechanisms. And so when you go to take move data on and off the cloud or just keep it in the cloud, you've got direct control of it on premise without using self-encrypting drives. All right, so it's one of the key design elements that we, we enable with ZFS storage, especially for scalability into the cloud. Architecturally, ZFS storage was, has been changed over the last four or five years to ensure complete flexibility and scale in using cloud environments. And here's, a, I show you a quick snapshot of the architecture. What we have is you can create an all flash pool of storage with ZFS using, say, 3.2 terabyte SSDs. You can create a hybrid storage pool. You can create a hybrid cloud pool. And then you can nest in three different types of flash for extended use of that technology. You can do read oriented flash, L1 cache, which is a 1.6 terabyte read bias. SSD. You can nest in write-oriented uh, write flash, those small little 200 gig write-flash write-biased SSD. 
And you can nest in metadata flash, so if you want to do data reduction on ingest of sins, you can get up to eight or nine to one reduction on data by doing, using our new data deduplication technology as part of it as well. So we give you three different ways to scale the architecture depending on your own, your own specific environment. Make sense? All right, the other thing I want to talk about when it comes to scale was integration. In our own workshops, we found that approximately 73% of our time is spent tuning the database and stores to work best together. In that environment, it wasn't just scale about the architecture. We talked about architectural scale already, and there's been plenty of sessions on it. Here was scale about it, scale for administration purposes. Our design challenge here is very simple. Enable, enable a dynamic system, say a database storage system, to do I.O. sizing and memory use for optimal performance with both backup and primary storage. How do you do that without spending hours, if not weeks, tuning that environment for optimal performance? What we did was we created a new protocol called OISP. OISP essentially uses NFS or NFS v4 specifically under the covers, DNFS on the database side. We've nested in this communication between ZFS storage and the database and vice versa, a protocol that gives us unique hints. We get hints about the I.O. reason, the priority, the file type, the size. We even get hints about the prefetch and defetch nestability or capability of the I.O. coming from the 11G or 12C database. This makes ZFS an incredibly powerful system when it comes to dynamically tuning for today's modern environments. And I'm going to show you our first release. Our first release was back in 2000, I think it was 2008, with 11G R2 version of the database. In that release of the database, we did a very simple thing. We enabled us to dynamically tune record size and log bias setting for optimal database performance. In traditional NAS systems, you had 20, if not more, individually tuned file shares for specific database things. Log, right? And here you see on the right-hand side, a redo log, control file, data file, temp file. All these files independently and manually tuned for a given database perf performance purpose. With, with 11GR2 of our database and version one of our OISP, we dynamically tune record size and log bias setting. And so instead of having 20 shares or 30 shares, you have two shares, right? A data file and a control file. Those shares are dynamically tuned for the I.O. from the database. This cut probably on average about four months of tuning a database and storage subsystem for optimal performance. In our recent release, we took that next, next step further and we ingest what we call database I.O. prioritization. And what this does, the database we already, already said earlier, it gives us the hints on what database I.O. we're getting. Is it a rack ping? Is it an RMAN backup? Is it a, is it a control file? Is it a quiesce from, a, from, from a, a, a log? Now what we do is we prefetch and defetch the I.O. based on that knowledge to ensure optimal use of the ZFS storage system. So we're not just serving everything into L1 cache. We're serving things into L1 cache proactively based on what the database tells us very dynamic functionality. And in this functionality, we just released this about six, six weeks ago, you're seeing a 13x improvement in, in file control file performance, almost a 4x improvement in log file performance, and a much, much faster overall database responsiveness. Because again, we're tuning dynamically for the database environment. All right, this is what enables us, enables us to scale. Here I show you our L1 cache in the Archivix, right? A lot of times on the engineering side, we look at Archivix to determine the efficiency of a storage system. Left-hand chart here shows you, we, turn, we run an OLTP tra transaction. Three quarters of the way through that OLTP transaction, we turn on an RMAN backup. What you see on the right-hand side, second, second graph down, is you see substantial Archivix at that point. Because your RMAN backup is flooding your ARC, thereby causing a derogation in your OLTP performance. Almost 70% of our customers run this exact workload with ZFS storage. What we're doing now with OISP version two is we've taken that architecture and nested in prefetch and defetch hints, such that on the right-hand side, you see zero archivix when we ingest an RMAN backup stream into an OLTP transaction. Does that make sense? So what you're getting is a, a rapid performance database environment capable of serving primary storage and backup simultaneously for, uh, for ideal scale and use of the system. We've also nested in new analytics to give you a very good capability. So we've taken the AWR analytics that you normally see on, on, on the database side and nested them in ZFS storage. And what that combined entity does is it gives you not only the powerful ability to see at a per database use level, rack pings, RMAN backups, et cetera, what's going on in your infrastructure. This is a typical analytics view, but it also ensures optimal performance. In this combined entity, our log writer performance was improved by 86%, and we still simultaneously got 33% better backup. 
right? It made much, for, much more efficient and powerful use of the ZFS machine. If you look at it holistically, what you get out of this system architecture is utilization that went from 70 to 80 percent on overall I.O. basis with those two workloads to upwards of 93, 95 percent because of this advanced automated technology, virtually eliminating the need to manually tune database and storage to work best together. Mm -hmm. And with that, I'll end on a marketing slide because that's where I have to end. But I'll tell you there, um, the key thing for us in terms of scale is being able to scale outside of the boundaries of a single storage system. That's what I first talked about. And be able to maximize use of your ZFS machine or your any storage subsystem in your rack environment. Making sure you get the most out of the dollars you spent for that storage subsystem. In both categories, we believe we've architected a solution that outpaces everybody else in the marketplace. Okay. okay. With that. Very good. Thank you, Jason. Good. Got time for time for one question. Yeah, sure. Going once, going twice. All right. Okay. Thanks again. Um,